Hello everyone. Today I will be explaining you the disorders that are associated with collagen biosynthesis. Now some of the disorders that are associated with collagen biosynthesis they are osteogenesis imperfecta, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, and then we have uh, scurvy and Menkes syndrome. Let me first explain you what some of the details related with osteogenesis imperfecta. Now the osteogenesis imperfecta which is also called as brittle bone disease which is also referred as Lockstein syndrome. Now why do you see osteogenesis imperfecta? Coming to the causes of osteogenesis imperfecta. So there are several mutations that have been noted which will cause osteogenesis imperfecta. So it all depends on what is, what is the type of osteogenesis imperfecta. Based on that there are different causes for it. But in all these osteogenesis imperfectas, the one thing that is common is that type 1 collagen molecule has been mutated here. So that means a gene which is coding for procollagen 1A1 and procollagen 1A2 basically which is coding for uh, collagen uh, 1, uh, alpha 1 and alpha 2 uh, chains present in type 1 collagen molecule. More than 90% of the cases of type 1 osteogenesis imperfecta is because of reduced biosynthesis of collagen type 1 collagen molecule. So I repeat again type 1 osteogenesis imperfecta more than 90% of these cases are because of reduced synthesis of collagen that is type 1 collagen. Now other types of osteogenesis imperfectas like type 2, type 3, type 4, 5 and 6 all these are types of osteogenesis imperfectas. So other osteogenesis imperfectas other than type 1 osteogenesis imperfecta they are caused most of the time because of different mutation and in that a common type of mutation that you see is a substitution mutation. A substitution mutation that is commonly observed is at the every third position of collagen molecule uh, there is a glycine and if you take this glycine out and replace that, that particular glycine with uh, any other amino acid with a bulkier side chain so that is what is a common type of substitution that you see in different types of osteogenesis imperfecta other than type 1. Now if you replace this uh, glycine, take the glycine out which is the smallest amino acid and put that, put another, any, any other amino acid which have got uh, bulkier side chain, so that can cause uh, mechanical hindrance because it can change the nanodynamics of a collagen molecule. So because of this, so there will be abnormal collagen that is synthesized and that can give rise to osteogenesis imperfecta. Now let's move on to see what all the signs and symptoms that you see in osteogenesis imperfecta. One of the most common sign that you see in all types of osteogenesis imperfecta is the bone deformity. So this bone deformity can be severe, it can be lethal, it all depends on the different types of osteogenesis imperfecta. So a brittle bone or a weak bone is formed in osteogenesis imperfecta. So bone deformity is the central feature of osteogenesis imperfecta cases. Along with bone deformity, uh, majority of osteogenesis imperfecta, especially type 1, type 2, type 3 osteogenesis imperfecta, they all will show blue sclera. Blue sclera is one of the important signs seen in osteogenesis imperfecta. Why do you see blue sclera? It is because of less collagen being synthesized here. Sclera is so thin, so the choroid which is be, uh, present benign, uh, beneath the sclera, sclera can be visible and that is why you see the bluish discoloration there. Now along with the blue sclera, so patients with osteogenesis imperfecta will show dental abnormalities which is also called as dentinogenous imperfecta. So this dental abnormalities can also be seen in type 1, type 2, type 3 osteogenesis imperfecta. Majority of time type 4, 5 and 6, 7 they don't show dental abnormalities. Now what else you see in osteogenesis imperfecta? Patients with osteogenesis imperfecta they will have hearing loss. So type 1 osteogenesis imperfecta and other types of osteogenesis imperfecta cases they will have hearing loss. And also all osteogenesis imperfecta cases they have a family positive family history. So these are some of the signs that you see in osteogenesis imperfecta. So I will repeat again. So bone deformity is the central feature of osteogenesis imperfecta. 
along with the bone deformity patients will have uh, blue sclera patients will have uh, dent, uh, dental abnormalities which is called as dentinogenesis imperfecta and then the patients will have hearing loss and of course positive family history is seen in osteogenesis imperfecta so these are some of the signs and symptoms of osteogenesis imperfecta now let me explain you uh, some of the details about ehlers danlos syndrome now eds or ehler danlos syndrome there are different types of ehler danlos syndrome so there is uh, classic ehler danlos syndrome then we have hypermobile ehler danlos syndrome and we have vascular ehler danlos syndrome so it means the each different types of ehler danlos syndromes are eds cases so they have got different types of collagens being mutated here for example in classic ehler danlos syndrome so type 5 collagen and type 1 collagen uh, genes have been mutated whereas in hypermobile ehler danlos syndrome there is a mutation in tenacin x b gene that is tn x b gene which is coding for tenacin x in the extracellular matrix this is a protein which is in works in association with collagen and that particular protein has been mutated and that can cause hypermobile ehler danlos syndrome then we have vascular ehler danlos syndrome in vascular ehler danlos syndrome a type 3 collagen has been noted to be mutated that means ehler danlos syndrome cases there will be mutation in different types of collagen molecules now what are the signs and symptoms do you see in ehler danlos syndrome patients so patients with ehler danlos syndrome there are three systems which have been affected here and that is uh, joints are affected a uh, skin is affected and uh, blood vessels are affected in ehler danlos syndrome patients now the joint being affected here so the patients with ehler danlos syndrome will have hypermobile joint or hyperelastic or hypermobile joints are present here it means patients with ehler danlos syndrome patients they have hypermobility in the joints they can flex uh, 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 bend their joints in a different way in, a, in an abnormal way and also because of the laxity in the joints or hypermobility in the joints so there is a risk of repeated dislocations in ehler danlos syndrome patients in fact ehler danlos syndrome patients they will be knowing how to reduce their dislocation by themselves because the repeated dislocations will be going on in them now let's moving on to other sign that is seen in ehler danlos syndrome patients is the skin being affected here so the hyperelasticity of the skin is one of the common feature of ehler danlos syndrome patients so the skin is dramatically elastic here so and also the uh, the skin is so thin so there can be if there is a injury to the skin so that the uh, it heals by uh, fibrosis process and the type of scar you see in uh, patients with ehler danlos syndrome is referred as cigarette paper scar because it will be a skin is uh, it will become a thin velvet velvety color uh, 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 characteristic feature will be present for the skin now coming and also there can be stretch marks and all that coming to the third sign that you see in ehler danlos syndrome patients is associated with the blood vessels because blood vessel has collagen so it means collagen is abnormally synthesized so that means patients with ehler danlos syndrome they will have easy bruisability so there can be rupture of the blood vessel especially on the skin so bruising process with a minimal uh, friction there can be bruises so so these are some of the features about ehler danlos syndrome and the molecule that is defective in ehler danlos syndrome is collagen note that it is not elastin so elastin is fine in ehler danlos syndrome the problem is with the collagen molecule so hyperelasticity is not because elastin is defective as such uh, but there is a defect in the collagen which is in uh, in turn with interacting with the elastin but the molecule that is defective here is the collagen in ehler danlos syndrome patient now let's move on to see our third disorder which is associated with collagen biosynthesis and that is scurvy now why scurvy is uh, uh, taught under collagen biosynthesis disorder it's because scurvy is because of deficiency of ascorbate and that is vitamin c now the ascorbate or vitamin c as we have seen in my previous video that uh, in collagen biosynthesis there are two enzymes which are involved in hydroxylation of proline and lysine into hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine and those two enzymes are proline hydroxylase and lysyl hydroxylase 
So in uh, scurvy, because of the vitamin C deficiency, the uh, uh, functioning of prolyl hydroxylase and lysyl hydroxylase, these two enzymes, they will be decreased. So because of the decreased activity of prolyl hydroxylase and lysyl hydroxylase, so there will be decreased hydroxylation in uh, pro-alpha chains of collagen molecule, especially in the endoplasmic reticulum. So because of this decreased hydroxylation, what happens? So there will be decreased availability of uh, hydroxyl containing amino acids in pro-alpha chain. And that means when the pro-collagen formation is going on in the endoplasmic reticulum, so the lack of hydrogen bond formation will be there. And that means uh, improperly made collagen being synthesized. And so that means in scurvy there will be improper collagen formation and this improperly made collagen being inserted into different tissues. So that means it can give rise to certain signs and symptoms in scurvy. Some of the signs and symptoms that is that are seen in scurvy are there will be loose gums or bleeding in the gums can be seen because the blood vessels are not properly made. So there can be loss of the teeth, uh, there can be uh, the gum bleeding or swelling in the gums can be seen and also there can be bleeding uh, beneath the hair follicle so around the hair follicle there can be bleeding which we call it as uh, perifollicular hemorrhages so hemorrhages can also be seen across our body so it can there can be small little hemorrhages beneath the skin so that can be petechia can be seen hemorrhages can be seen in the joint space uh, and also there will be poor wound dealing process because call improper collagen formation so it will delay the wound dealing process there and that can be seen in scurvy. Now let's move on to see our fourth disorder associated with collagen biosynthesis and that is Menkes syndrome. So the problem in Menkes syndrome is there is a defect in the copper transporter and the gene that is defective here in Menkes syndrome is uh, ATP7A gene mutation will be seen and this ATP7A gene is located on X chromosome that is why Menkes syndrome it follows X linked recessive inheritance pattern. Now what is the problem here? So the uh, problem here is the intestinal epithelial cells which are uh, transporting copper out of the intestine into the portal system that is where is the problem is. So enterocytes which are pumping out copper out of the enterocyte into the portal blood which needs P-type ATPase, that is a copper transporter P-type ATPase coded by ATP7A gene and that is mutated here. It means copper is absorbed into the intestine from the food but from the intestine it is not transported into the portal system. It means all the copper that is absorbed into the intestine, it is just staying there in the intestine. It is not moving out of the intestine into the portal system and then into the liver and other body parts. It means there will be decrease in the serum copper. So serum copper levels or ceruloplasmin levels will be decreased. It means all across the body there will be decrease in the copper but intestines are rich in coppers because intestinal tissue and enterocytes they absorb copper but they are not releasing it to the portal system. So the intestinal copper will be too high whereas if you take a liver biopsy or estimate copper levels in the blood so the blood copper levels or uh, liver copper levels it will be decreased. So overall what happens? All the enzymes that are dependent on copper for their uh, as a cofactor co so those enzymes they will decrease their function. Now one of the enzyme that is involved in collagen biosynthesis and that needs copper is lysyl oxidase. Now this lysyl oxidase which needs copper as a cofactor so it is going to decrease its activity and that means lysyl oxidase which is participating in collagen cross-linking process so the collagen cross-linking process will decrease because lysyl oxidase it, uh, it oxidatively deaminates lysine residue side chain of amino group in lysine is taken out by lysyl oxidase and that process decreases that means aldol condensation and shift base formation will decrease giving rise to defective or improperly made collagen. Note that lysyl oxidase is important in the conversion of tropocollagen into mature collagen so the conversion of tropocollagen into mature collagen is affected in Menkes syndrome because simply lysyl oxidase has decreased its function and that's because copper is deficient. So what all, and what other enzymes do you see which needs copper? So one of the examples that I would like to give here is dopamine beta oxidase or hydroxylase enzyme. 
So this dopamine beta oxidase or hydroxylase enzyme, it is converting dopamine into norepinephrine in sympathetic neurons and that needs ascorbate. So in the ascorbate deficiency, so this enzyme can decrease its function. That means norepinephrine synthesis can be decreased in sympathetic neurons. So overall, with because of all these uh, uh, enzymes being deficient or uh, so many other enzymes, which needs copper, they are decreased, they will decrease their activity. So overall patients with Menke syndrome, they have got brittle hair or thin sparse hair. So that is why this is called as a Menke kinky hair or brittle hair syndrome. And also patients with Menke syndrome, they will have severe, severe neurological uh, condition and that's probably because of decreased uh, sympathetic neuronal activity. That's because norepinephrine synthesis is also affected. So overall, Menke syndrome is a lethal condition. So that is because uh, there is a defect in the copper transporter in the intestinal uh, basal side of enterocytes. So these are some of the disorders that are associated with collagen biosynthesis. Just to recap them again, so uh, we have osteogenesis imperfecta, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, we have scurvy and Menke syndrome. All of them are associated with collagen biosynthesis. I hope this video has helped you and in understanding disorders that are associated with collagen biosynthesis. So if you like the video, so give a thumbs up and also if you have any questions, so feel free to write your questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.